All right, guys, you're about to see the video on how to recone a sub. This is, I used that NSV3, I was rebuilding to an 18, so I built the frame up. If you see, it's working. Um, hope you enjoy the video. I just want to apologize in advance for the terrible photo or video quality. Uh, which I shot everything by myself here at my house. Um, it's kind of hard to rebuild a sub with only one hand, so I did the best I could. Uh, if you do have any questions or need help with anything, leave a comment below and I will be sure to answer you as soon as I can. Hope you enjoy the video. Thanks, guys. Here's that MSB3. Um, I'm about to cut it up to do a recone. So I wanted to show you really quick. I'm going to take a razor and go along this edge here as close to the frame as I can. Cut the soft, cut the surround. And then I'm going to unhook these. Just a simple um, Allen wrench will do it. Unhook these. And then I take a knife and I just cut the spider all the way around. Usually, then I would take my Dremel and grind down this part of the landing of the spider and the landing here and make a nice clean surface to do my drop-in recone. However, in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and take it all the way down to the motor and then rebuild it with a new frame. Um, so I'll give you videos as I do that. So I took just a basic knife and I cut all the way around and all the way around um, and I released the leads always save your your bolts for them but I released them and they're free so I'm ready to pull this whole soft part so all the soft parts out of this sub so here now as you see no issues uh, you can see it did have some clipping at some point, just a little bit. Not too bad. But, uh, yep. Triple joint. Everything looks good on it. So, definitely wasn't blown. Here's when you look down in it. Um, usually when it's blown, you want to go down in here, make sure you get everything out of the gaps, clean it all up. I'm going to clean it up anyways, but it's extra important if you blow this up because you'll have pieces of the coil down in here. Uh, the best way I've seen it done is I've seen people take like a ruler or something that's a little bit flexible with, a, with tape on it, and they just go around and pick everything up. And then I usually spray it out with air just to make sure. Um, however... I am going to recode this to an 18, so, and it wasn't blown, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these bolts off and get it down to the motor. Um, but yeah, everything looks, looks to be good in here. So now that I had the spider and the surround, all the soft parts out, I went ahead and took these bolts out. As you can see, they're... Allen head bolts. Um, they are five millimeter. It's what I use to take them out. I'm ready to pull the last bolt out, and let's see what we got. All right. Hopefully this comes off easy. Oh, well, it's not even attached. So there's the bottom of the basket. This here is the vent ring, the aluminum vent ring. So go ahead and take that off as well. As you can see here, this is that top plate I was talking about in an earlier video. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. I have new soft parts arriving for it tomorrow, so I will continue on with the video. But here is your NSV3 motor. If you're not, as you're reconing or rebuilding it, if, if you're not actually working on it at the time, I always take a bag, go over it, and then I use gorilla tape and I go around the edge to make sure there are no dust, dust or anything getting into the motor. Um. Alright guys, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and get started with rebuilding this NSV3 as you can see right here. Here are the items you're going to need. You're going to need 
obviously clips to hold down the surround. You can use just the gasket, but I prefer the clips. You're going to need Loctite, five minute self leveling epoxy. This goes on top of the spider landing, I'm on top of the spider. E6000. This goes on top of this landing here to hold the surround down. You need blue Loctite thread locker. That is to hold the bolts into the motor. You go in right through here. You need CA glue. This is a two ounce. I ordered this all off the internet, I believe through Lorda Base. Um, the two ounce will get me about four recones of, of an 18. So it lasts a long time as long as you clean, clean up the, the nozzle once you're done. One basic knife. Safety goggles as always. To clean the top of the basket here, it's already been pretty well cleaned, but I'm going to hit it again with this little bit right here. I always use a just a basic Dremel with a sandpaper bit on the end of it. Um, obviously, you're going to need the frame. Um, terminals are already in. Just remember when you set in the terminals, if you're building it from scratch, positive is to the left. Um, this is an 18 inch frame so it also has the built-in plastic adapter and this adapter piece here I had them put that in at, at sundown so there's a plastic piece here which is this is the spider landing and this is an adapter piece so it'll bolt up to the motor um, this here is the vent ring this is an aluminum one um, that goes underneath between the motor and the frame I also have the NSV3 motor. I have it bagged up because I already have it all sprayed out and cleaned up. Got to have the 18 inch gasket right here. Also right here is the dust cap. Or if you want to go custom, you could use the carbon fiber. It doesn't matter. Either one works fine. You're going to have a, a recone kit. I always ohm it out again. As you can see, I use my multimeter. It's reading point 0.9, but I'm sure to see if you touch it, it's at 1. It is correct. I already checked it. Um, the recone we're going to be using today is Nightshade Spiders, Red Spiders, Dual Tinsel Leads, SPL Surround, and actually the flat wound coil. Um, use these on all of my subs in my, my SPL vehicle. So that's actually where this one will be going as well. Um, then I also have all my various tools I need. I usually just try and keep a pick tool. I also try and keep the Allen wrenches I need for the, for the terminal couplers and the tinsel leads. Uh, compressed air, just to clean everything up. You want to clean this gap before each and every pass. Otherwise, you, you run the risk of getting dirt in there and you get a scratched coil or detonates itself. Not a good, you want to clean it, keep it as clean as possible. I clean all the landings before I get ready to adhere anything with acetone. Always a good idea, never hurts. Keep a few shop rags around as well. Some of this glue and adhesives gets messy, as, you, as you'll see later on in the video. And I also get about nine to ten sheets of printer paper. We use the, the printer paper to shim out to shim out the drop-in. So you know you have to pull that and you have the printer paper that, to shim out this coil here so it's perfectly aligned. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take acetone, clean this up. I'm gonna go ahead and clean out that little bit of dust you see there and the gap all the way around. I went ahead and cleaned up the coil as you can see, I'm sorry, not the coil, the gap. As you can see, so now I'm going to go ahead and get ready, drop on the um, vent ring, which just kind of sits right on top, just got to line up the holes. Go ahead, I'm going to get that situated, 
And then from there, I go ahead and get the frame set right on top. These holes here should line up with the motor holes here, and they should ultimately line up with these holes. And we'll go ahead to the next step. All right, guys, so I went ahead and test fitted. As you can see, this is the aluminum vent ring, bottom of the motor. And I went ahead and placed all of the bolts in here just to make sure they all fit correctly and everything looked good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go pull all these bolts back out and I'm going to go ahead and put some of the thread locker on them and drop them back in. And I'm going to tighten them down with this Allen wrench, which happens to be a 5 millimeter, as you can see here. That is the size that fits. So you don't need to put any kind of adhesive between the motor and the vent ring or the vent ring and the bottom of the frame. All you need to do is make sure that you these fit. Do not cross thread them. Take your time. I always put them in, make sure they all fit. Then pull them back out, put thread locker on them, put them back in, and I cross, cross tighten them down much like you do a uh, the lugs on your car. Bolts are all in. They've been tightened. They have Loctite on them. They're not going anywhere. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and spray the terminals with CA glue and I'm just spraying it with activator. Now I'll give my speech once. Once you spray, you put the CA glue down the black part, it's still liquid just like any other glue. Once you hit it with that activator, it activates in literally 20 seconds and then wherever you decide, wherever you spray that, it is done. So when you're spraying CA glue onto the bottom of this landing here, for the bottom of the spider for example, make absolutely sure it's set exactly where you want it before you adhere it. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and do this just my own personal preference to go ahead and make sure that these, terminal, these terminals aren't moving at all in the future. So now I'm going to clean everything up one more time and then we're going to get ready for the drop-in. All right guys, now we're ready for the drop-in recone. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get some acetone on a rag. I'm going to go ahead and clean up all of my landings right now while I, have, while I put the recone in. Okay? See anything else? Go ahead and get that. I already hit the gap. Just want to double check it again just to make sure it looks good. So I already checked out the ohm load on the recone. So then pretty much you go right in, set it down in there. You want to make sure that the tinsel leads line up with the terminals as they do right now. There you go. And then on the sundown recones, we have three three little tabs. I don't know if you can see them here. The bolt should always be in the middle one. And their tinsel leads should line up always. Um, as they do here, it looks pretty good. Um, then we're going to go ahead and start, once we have that all lined up, we start shimming out the coil. Now there's lots of different ways. There are sleeves that you could get sometimes to do them. Um, I use a good old-fashioned printer paper, especially with these, because the gap is so tight on it. Anyways, so let me go ahead and show you my method, and then I'll go ahead and get it secured. So I go one full this way, right? The, the, these two long ways should be in the gap. These two corners must always be aligned. So you see how I have the opening, the little opening going this way? Now I'm going to have it go that way. Um, some people like to go from the inside of the gap. I like to go from the outside to do them. It's just personal preference. Um, again, you just got to make sure they should move. You just want to make sure that you get it as close as you possibly can, one side to the other. Um, and you want the corners to always line up. So as you see here, they do. 
So we only have one one this way, one that way. And then I go one that opening facing that way, the other one the opening facing this way. And then I go ahead, so that way, that way, that way, that way, and then I go ahead and start all over. For, if you're doing an NSV3 exactly, it should take about nine sheets of paper to, to shim out the gap. Um, other than that, I will follow back up with you once I get this whole gap shimmed up. Uh, as you can see now, I got nine sheets of paper in here just as I thought I would have. It's snug, but I can still move it so I can adjust the recomb before I start gluing it in. I'm going to go through one more time, spray some air down in here, get some down here in this gap. Um, as you can see, everything's all lined up as it should be. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to take a screwdriver. Um, I usually take this one or sometimes I will take actually a roll of Gorilla Tape and I will actually lift, make sure this is all the way down, I will lift up this recon just so I can get CA glue down in, down underneath the landing here and get it activated. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Alright, so as you can see I lift, I have this right here, I still have the shim in there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I lifted up the recone just enough, so I'm going to go in here, right in that gap on that landing there, and I'm going to do just a small bead of CA glue all the way around the whole thing. And then I'm going to set my recone back down. Um, I'll show you right before I activate it. So now as you see, I put a bead. You see I put a bead all the way around, now I'm going to go ahead and drop down the spider and get it ready to be set. Alright, so I went ahead and dropped, took the, the tape roll down, you see the holes are lined up, shim is still perfectly intact. Spider is down, tinsels are lined up, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push down all the way around. Make sure it gets that spider saturated on the bottom side, you can see it can pop up a little bit through some of the holes, which we'll fill those in later as well if they don't pop up. But you see that, see how they're filling in? Um, so we'll go ahead and get that all set. And then I will go ahead and hit it with activator and hold it down. So when I hit it with activator, I spray it. I spray it while I'm holding it down with one finger so it sets really quick. Now let me go ahead and take care of that before it, it does start to harden. All right, so I went ahead and activated. You can see it's a little wet still. I went ahead and Put the activator, you see the spider's set, not moving, everything is lined up perfectly as it should be. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through and fill in all of these little holes here on the spider with CA glue and activate it. Um, you don't have to, it's just one of those little things I do. And then from there we'll move on to the next step. Alright, so I went ahead and filled in all these little holes you can see all the way around. I'm giving it a few minutes to dry. I almost forgot the most important thing. Once you do your bead of black, uh, whatever color CA glue, and you set your, sp your spider down, make sure your shims are all good, make sure everything lines up. Once you spray this activator, there's no turning back. So make sure everything is perfectly aligned the way you want it before you spray that activator to activate the CA glue. Because um, it dries almost instantaneously. See, I just did, and I got a little bit on my finger here, and it's solid. Um, so please, 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 unless you want to recone your sub several times, never use this until you're absolutely sure that it is set exactly where you want it. Now, with that being said, I'm, I'll let this sit for a few minutes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our five-minute epoxy, which is also self-leveling, and we're going to go ahead... We always fill in between this little plastic rib here from the, uh, from the adapter on the 18s. The 15s and below will not have this. And the first little bump on the spider. So you want to fill in right here where my finger is. You want to get as close to this edge as you can. Um, and it'll self-level. I usually, for an 18, I usually go through about a tube and a half to two tubes of this to get that done. So. I will go ahead and do that now and show you what it looks like. So as you can see, 
I went ahead, I, I did use two entire tubes of that Loctite 5 minute epoxy. It's the self mixing one, it's a little easy to use, just put it down. So I filled, I tried to get as close to the to the ga to the plastic ring here as I could and I worked my way out. It's still leveling out. I mean I put it down probably two minutes ago. So we gotta let it sit for about five minutes. Then from there we're gonna go ahead and work on starting to glue the surround down. Just wanna verify the gap and everything's okay, cleaned up one last time, then we'll start we'll worry about this. And then from there we'll go ahead and get those tinsels all glued in. So we're almost there guys. What I do now is I you see I put rags over the spider. The the spider is essentially dry. Still have the shims in. That's one of the last I, I don't remove that until I take out put the dust cap on and everything else is dry. So now what I'm gonna do is I put these in here just because E6000 can be messy. You want to kind of do a heavy bead underneath. You want to just lift up the surround just like that. You just hold it up and just go all the way around. And just apply a heavy bead and set it right back down. Um, obviously I can't videotape that one. I can't do that one handed so I'm going to have to show you when I'm done. But I just use your standard E6000. If you're, if you're not too comfortable with just using just the basic tube, they do have ones like a dispenser nozzle, kind of like they do for the epoxy. You just have to look a little bit harder for it. I think Walmart may have them. Um, you go ahead and go heavy all the way around. And then what some people do is they just put the gasket on to hold it down. But I'm a little bit more anal about it, so I use clips. So once I get the E6000 down, heavy bead, push it all down, make sure that's lined up the holes make sure that the tinsel leads are still lined up as you can see right there they are um, everything's all lined up now go ahead and paper clip I'm not paper clip use the clothes pins and put them all down all the way around and then it takes about five hours for it to dry before I move on to the next step all right, as you can see here, I went ahead to the E6000. I did the holes first, and then I went all the way around. Um, did a little bit of a heavy bead. As you can see, it leaks a little bit. I cleaned it up afterwards when I pull all these off, uh, about five hours um, to let it set. I'll pull all these off. I'll probably hit now bolt up the tinsel leads, and then put the dust cap on. And when I do a dust cap, I put a little tape cylinder on it with a bowling ball and then I use that as pressure to center the dust cap and let it dry nice. Um, as you can see everything so this should be no rubs so it's looking good. Alright guys now I have the bolts and the lock washer that goes on to the bolts back here you can barely see them but yeah there are bolts back there that hold the tinsel leads on so I'm gonna go ahead and get those snugged up um, have my allen wrench and everything they are allen bolts as you can see um, I'm gonna go ahead and get those snugged up and then I am gonna put some CA glue on them um, just to make sure that they don't move while playing so before you put the CA glue down, I have them snugged up. Before you put the CA glue down, you want to double check, make sure that your terminals are right and that they're ohming out correct. I checked the other side already, so here I'm going to show you this side, um, point eight, which is correct. Um, so you will, so they are both correct. Now I'm going to go ahead and take CA glue, dab, hit the top of these bolts, and make sure that they stay secure. So you can see here the CA glue was put on and it was set. It's not going anywhere. So now the last piece, the dust cap. To put the dust cap on, actually I'm not going to use the carbon fiber. I'll use those later whenever the build is finalized. But So I'm going to use this Sundown Audio dust cap. It's got a little scuff on it already. It doesn't really matter. Um, so real quick, 
how I do this is first I take, I usually use masking, uh, not masking tape, uh, packing tape, but I don't have any, so I use electrical tape. Is I make a little loop, fold it around, and I put it on top so I can lift up my fingers and move it around as I'm placing it. Um, so E6000 goes around the lip here, all the way around the dust cap. And I also put it right here on this lip, on this recone, all the way around. Just a light bead, doesn't have to be super heavy. Um, the less you put, well, it has to be sound structurally, but the less you put, the better to look. You know, you've seen the builds where they have tons of E6000 around the dust cap. Doesn't necessarily look too visually appealing. Then what I do is, you can use whatever you want for a weight. I take gorilla, I take a tape roll, center it on there, and then I just take a bowling ball as a weight and hold it down just like that. So here, let me go ahead and get it set up and I will show you when it's done. All right guys, I'm getting ready to, pull the, to put the dust cap on. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the shim. So you can see, there's no issues. Um, so it's really snug. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. Boom. There you go. So you can see down in the gap there, perfectly even. Looks good. I'm gonna hit it one more time with compressed air as well. Well, I'm in here. Um... Okay. So, looks like we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead, you can see, no coil rub, no issues. Um, it's moving, very stiff spiders on this, not broken in, but as you can see, moving, no issues, so multimeters correct, we have perfectly good working sub, so I'm going to go ahead and get the dust cap going. So as you can see really quick, I did a light bead all the way around the dust cap, and I did a light bead all the way around there. So now I'm going to go ahead and get this thing centered and placed. Alrighty, I got the dust cap on. I took the tape off already. So now I'm going to go ahead and center a bowling ball on there um, on a piece of Gorilla tape uh, and let it dry. Here she is, guys. So you can see it's centered. It's not too heavy. That little bit there I can go ahead and clean off. It becomes a problem after it's all settled. I don't think it will. Um, got a nice bead. Got the Gorilla tape bowling ball this is set and drying now i usually leave it like this for about eight hours um, just let everything set up and i'll show you once i have it all taken apart and cleaned up here you are guys one completed recone sub um, just got done pulling putting the gasket on it pulling all the clips off taking the bowling ball off perfectly functioning as you can see really stiff. I don't know how much movement you can see, but perfectly fine. Looking good. Nothing crazy. Um, everything working as it should. Hope this video helped out somebody or will help out somebody in the future doing a recone. Um, if you have any questions, just comment as always. Uh, sorry about the video being so so choppy, I was shooting everything all by myself here. So we'll try and do a recone. It's a little hard to cut in both hands. So do the best I could. Sorry about the video quality. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Thank you.